obviously this is a very trying time in the world, especially in the United States, with the events of all the racial injustices. And I think that it is all of our responsibility to take part in creating a change. And while it's not my responsibility to tell you exactly how to make that change, I think we all have to do something anti-racism, not just sit back and relax. And I think the misconception with yoga practice in general is that it creates this sense of freedom, relaxation, some might call it woo-woo, <laughs> and you get to this state where nothing in the world bothers you anymore. And I just want to say that that is completely untrue. I think the power of this practice when we are in this embodied state as human beings is that it allows us to actually feel more deeply. And through that feeling, we are actually able to create more change because the emotions and feelings that start to stir up and erupt when things like this are happening in the world are your fuel to create change. The problem is that we have to know how to harness those emotions in order to do the right thing. So it's not about being complacent and sitting down and watching as the world crumbles. It is about taking right action. And the way that we can take right action is by doing right practice. And what I mean by that is that if you think about it from a Chinese medical point of view, the liver system, the liver and gallbladder systems, rule the tendons in the body. The other thing that's very important about the liver system is that it smooths the flow of qi or energy throughout your entire body. So when you feel stressed or when you feel upset, that liver qi starts to stagnate. One of the ways that you'll see this right away is that your chest and your diaphragm start to jam up because the natural movement of the liver energy is to go up and down. But when this is impeded by either too much emotional stagnation or by pain in general, if you're having a lot of frustration and anger, that's a result of what we call liver chi stagnation. So when you're having a lot of anger, which is completely legitimate right now, I don't want to you know, diminish the feelings that a lot of you are having, that all of us hopefully are having. If you're not angry right now, you're simply not paying attention. But anger is not a bad emotion. Anger is fuel. And if we harness it properly, it can be very powerful. As I was saying, the liver energy naturally goes up and down, but when it's impeded in any way, it starts to spread outwards. And when it spreads outwards, it jams up the diaphragm, jams up your chest, makes you feel like you can't breathe, makes you feel more frustrated and angry. And also what can happen is if the liver chi becomes too st stagnant, it can rush up too quickly. You'll start to feel flushing in your face, red in your eyes, headaches, and even eventually can lead to stroke. So it's not only important to harness and manage the liver energy, that anger, for your health, but also because what the liver does, what the liver and gallbladder systems do, is, what, is they allow us to have clarity in order to make decisions. They allow us to pivot and see all sides of, a, of an issue change our conditioned thinking so that we're not stuck in one rigid way of looking at the world. So that we're able to see what others are experiencing and develop compassion. So when we free up and allow there to be smooth flow in the liver energy in the body, everything in our lives can change. Everything in your life can change just by doing movement. Because remember I said that the liver controls or it governs the tendon. So movement, freedom of movement, allows you the clarity with which to make decisions that can drive change. So that's what I want to encourage you and that's what I'm here to support you with. I'm here to support you to use your practice as a vehicle to harness the emotions, the energy that you're feeling right now in this moment, whenever you're watching this to bring not only peace inside of you, because that inner peace is what's ultimately gonna let you be a vehicle for change in the world, 
but also to be a part of creating justice, right? Because we have to be in a good space within ourselves. If you look at role models like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., they didn't come forward with that fierce anger and try to blow the world down. They came with that, that anger deep inside of them, but harnessed properly, managed properly as a way to create change. So today we're going to primarily focus on moving the stagnant liver energy. And one of the most essential ways to do that is actually to free up the gallbladder. So in Chinese medicine, there are paired organs and under the wood element, you have the liver and the gallbladder systems. The gallbladder governs the sides of your body primarily, and it's the yang aspect of the wood element, meaning it's the more active. So when you get the gallbladder moving, it helps to clear the liver energy that gets stuck. And the gallbladder energy, when it gets stuck, you're gonna have difficulty with rotation, you're gonna have tightness in your hips, you're gonna have tightness and a lot of trapped energy in the tra trapezius muscles. I'm sure you've all experienced that, I know I have. And you're going to have trouble making decisions because it, it, you start to accumulate a lot of dampness, there's a lot, lack of clarity. So by clearing the gallbladder meridian, by doing more twisting motion, by clearing the hips and the traps and the shoulders, we're going to clear that dampness, allow that energy to move in the liver so that the, there's smooth flow of chi throughout your whole body and then you have greater clarity. The other aspect that's really important when you're feeling strong emotions is that you free your chest. Because remember, this is where emotional energy can easily get stuck. And so when we open the lungs, when we free the chest, we're able to have clarity about our emotions. We're able to see things for how they are and really process them properly. And we're also able to breathe deeply. And as you breathe deeply, the lungs, which are contained in the chest, which are contained in the rib cage, will allow you to let go so that you can be more clear and make decisions moving forward with your life with that clarity. So with that in mind, let's get started. And we're going to start simply by coming into a standing position where your feet are about shoulder distance apart. And we'll just start with a few very deep breaths, just anchoring our energy in as we begin practice wherever you are, feeling whatever it is that you're experiencing, all the sensations are welcome here. And feeling grounded. So that groundedness is also essential when you want to manage your emotional energy. Feeling your feet ground into the earth. Feeling the crown of your head lift up. Armpits are hollow so that chi or energy can circulate everywhere in your body. Your face is soft, your breath is full, and you pay attention to what's happening physically. While all emotions and the experience of them is, are important, it's also essential to move the energy of those emotions always because otherwise they begin to get trapped in the body physically and in latency they can create dis-ease. So if you feel any areas where there's a lot of tension, stagnation, maybe your head feels heavy or your shoulders or neck feel tight, hips feel a little locked up, I want you to take a few deeper breaths and just feel that energy circulate more. So we learn to use our presence, our peace, our inner peace to navigate the challenges of the world. And as you take a deep breath, just pay attention to what's happening in your mind. Noticing if there's any judgment, your mind is overactive or calm. Good, and then take one more breath. And just pay attention to the environment in which you're standing. Notice the smells, the sounds, everything around you, just experience it fully.
take one more breath here. And with a smile on your face, just gently open your eyes, gazing just a couple feet in front of you at first and then beyond. And we'll start just by shaking. So obviously one way that the energy gets trapped or stuck is, well, it gets trapped everywhere, but one of the best ways to free it up is to move, is to shake. And by right practice, what I mean is that it's not just about moving your body any which way. It's about moving it in such a way that you're freeing up stagnation and tension in the areas in which that tension tends to get the most stuck. And that's going to be the major joints of your body. That's where chi tends to bind up bind up. You can breathe in and out, maybe breathe out through the mouth a little bit, and then just start to shake a little more vigorously, getting your feet, knees, legs, arms involved. Good. Shake it all out. And the first exercise we're going to do is an exercise from so Tai, which has to do with moving in the comfortable direction. So this is comes from a Japanese tradition. And the way that you're going to do this exercise is you're going to lift from the wrists. You're going to lift the arms up and we're going to twist side to side. And as you twist, lift the opposite heel from the direction that you're twisting toward. So you're going to go side to side and then evaluate which side was it a little bit easier to twist toward. There's always a side that's a little bit more stuck. And I want you to actually move in the direction that's easier. So when you lift your arms, twist and twist, see which side is a little bit more free. So for me, it's this side. I'm gonna start to do all the movement in this direction, right? So as I inhale, I'm gonna lift the arms up. As you exhale, you're gonna go to your easy direction you're going to take an inhale there, stretch a little bit deeper, and then exhale, release. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, twist in toward the easy direction. Take a breath there, stretch a little bit deeper, and then exhale, release. Let's do that again. Inhale. Find your easy direction, twist toward that side with your exhale. Inhale, stretch more. You may be able to go even further this time. And then exhale, release. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, lift the arm. Exhale, twist to the easy direction. Same side. Go a little deeper with your inhale. Exhale, release. And then shake that out. And now twist side to side. Notice if you feel more free. If you don't, keep doing that movement in the easy direction a few more times. And when you're practicing this at home, it's important to just keep doing that until you feel like you're almost even side to side. The reason why this is so important is because remember, we're trying to free up the gallbladder meridian, which goes along the sides of our body and helps us to twist. So now that you're a little bit more free, let's swing the arms. And at first you just go light. So you're really swinging the arms from the turn of the hips. Notice I'm not lifting and dropping my arms. I'm twisting and the arms swing. Twist and swing, twist and swing. And you breathe as you move. Good. And then as you get more comfortable with that movement, you can start to turn your head and go a little deeper. And as I go deeper, I'm going to lift the back heel. So my as I go to the right, my left heel lifts. As I go to the left, my right heel lifts. And I start to turn my head to deepen the twist even more. And breathe. You may find that as you twist and that frees up, you start to be able to breathe more deeply. Remember, because the gallbladder meridian, when not free, can bind up the chest and even 
stagnate your breathing because it starts to bind the diaphragm as well. Good. And then release that. And remember, another area in which the energy gets easily trapped is in the trapezius muscles. So right in this area, also the neck, the shoulders. So we're going to work to free that all up as well. What you're going to do is place your hands on your hips and you're going to move the head from side to side. And as you go side to side, lift the shoulder that you're moving your ear toward. Don't drop the ear quite yet, so we're not doing this yet. Just side to side. And breathe, inhaling and exhaling. And really when things are tough, when you're feeling most discouraged, that's when your self-care, that's when your practice is most essential. So I acknowledge all of you for being here to do this practice, because I know it's hard and then you're going to go forward and back. So as my neck goes forward, my shoulders push back. And then you get kind of hollow in your clavicle. And then we're going to tie up those four movements of side to side. So it's a rotational movement of the neck. Pushing your chin forward and back. And then reverse directions. Breathe. Good. And then let's go side to side with the neck a little bit. So now what you're doing is you're actually dropping your ear to your shoulder. And as you drop the ear, the shoulder lifts and lifts. You're really working that tension out of the trapezius, out of the shoulders and neck, and breathing as you do it. Now, I'm going fairly quickly, but you can slow down the movement. It doesn't have to be fast, especially if you have a lot of tension and stiffness in the neck and shoulders. Do it really, really slowly. Yeah, and then go forward. Let your chin touch your chest, if you can, stretching the back of your neck, and then slowly back stretching the front of your neck. So forward, back, really slow, really slow if you have a lot of tension. Keep the abdominal muscles engaged so you really ground through the core. Feet are really nice and grounded in the earth. And then go gently forward. And what I want you to do is just drop your ear over to that left side and drop your arms and just stretch feel the stretch now drop this shoulder bring the hand so that the your middle finger rests inside of your ear and just pull a little bit more so i'm kind of holding the inside of the ear and stretching all through the trapezius all through the side of the neck my shoulder here is relaxed shoulder here relax arm loose now breathe Breathe more, and then exhale. Be really gentle with yourself. Bring your chin to your chest, and then just move the head to the other side. Bring the shoulder up at first, just kind of support the neck, and then you can drop the shoulder, drop the other shoulder as well. Reach around with that right hand, pull, drop. Pull a little bit more, but gently. And you can kind of rock your head forward and back a little and notice how the stretch changes. Abdominal muscles engaged. Be really gentle here. Remember, especially if you have a lot of stiffness, you want to go slow and deep with the movements. Breathe. And then just keep it static. Take a couple more breaths here. And your exhale is going to bring your chin to your chest. So you're going to drop, drop the arm, and you're going to lift the head up gently. And you're going to roll the shoulders. So forward, up, back, and down. Forward, up, back, and down. So the idea or the theme for today's class is to move energy so that you can smooth the flow of chi. So if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling frustrated, 
that's how to harness that energy so that you can actually use it, so that you can actually be resourceful, make clear decisions. We want to open the gallbladder. We want to open all the areas that get stuck, that stagnate that liver chi. And now you're going to go forward, so back, up, forward, and down. And arms nice and loose. And kind of bend your knees a little bit too. Just let your arms brush the sides of your body. You want to release the gallbladder, but then also open the chest because that's where the emotions often get trapped. That's where it becomes difficult to breathe deeply so you can let go, so you can be clear. Good, and then go ahead and brush the sides of your body. So instead of moving your hips, just go up and down because you really want to feel the stretch along the torso. So off also helps to open up the space between the ribs. Take nice deep breaths. Good. Feel the freedom. And if, again, if you're really stiff, slower movement, but deeper breaths. Deep breathing. So we've worked in the shoulders, the sides of the body, the ribs. Now the area that also tends to get very stuck is the hips. So this is often, so we'll do slow, small circles at first. So oftentimes when you're experiencing a lot of anger that becomes latent, meaning that you're not really processing it or the body isn't ready to process it, it starts to trap it in certain areas of the body. The joints hold a lot of emotion and the hips in particular tend to hold on to anger. So if you're chronically angry or frustrated or have been going through a period of a lot of frustration, which at this time in history is pretty legitimate, you wanna move these areas more because you really don't want that to get stuck long-term in your body. That's what creates dis-ease. It's what brings about illness over time. So you can actually use your practice as disease prevention as a way to heal your body and mind and operate more resourcefully in the world. So now you're gonna go forward and back. So as you go forward and back, make sure the movement is really big. So I'm really pushing my hips forward and I'm really going back and when I go back, notice I can stretch my hamstrings. But it's a really gentle movement. It's not rushed. And if you want, you can press your thumbs into the crevices in the lower back. That'll give you a little more support. Let's do just a couple more. All the way, nice and easy. Good, and then we'll reverse, but we'll start with small circles. Good. And breathe. Relax your shoulders. Really use the core as well. And when you're practicing at home, you can do as many repetitions as you need to start to free yourself up. You move on when the joints feel more loose. So now, circles. Remember to come forward all the way, side all the way, back all the way. A few more like that. Breathe. One more. And just shake that out. And then all we're going to do is go a little bit deeper into the hips. So lift and lift. So you can just cross one hand over. And as you're pushing down the wrist, you're lifting the knee. That kind of gives you leverage to go a little bit higher. Eventually, you want your knee to come all the way up to your shoulder. But if it stops here, it's okay. Just keep doing that and practice that every day. Breathe. And point your toes when you lift the leg. Do a couple more on each side. 
slow that down. Just shake. Now just shake it all out. Lifting and dropping the heels. Inhale and exhale. And now you're going to bring the hands together. You're going to step your feet nice and wide into horse stance. So we're going to go really wide now. And your feet are turned about 45 degrees, hands are at the chest, and you're going to sit into a horse stance, into a deep squatting position. And as I go down, my legs are gonna rotate externally, so the knees are gonna point toward the pinky toes. So I sit, exhale, and go deep. And then come up, pressing into the heels of your feet. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. The next time you exhale, you're going to hold for five breaths. Make sure your back is straight. Tuck your tailbone. Relax your toes. Press into the outer edges of your feet. Sink a little deeper. Pull the lower abdomen in. Relax your jaw, relax the muscles you don't need right now. Take two more breaths. A little deeper, you're stronger than you think you are. Okay, with your next inhale, you're gonna press into the heels of your feet and come up slow, slow, slow. And then exhale, release the arms. Turn the feet in, inhale, lift, and bring the energy down the front of your body. Inhale, draw the energy up the back. Exhale, down the front. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. One more. Exhale. And then just pause. Breathe. Relax your jaw. And amidst the chaos, amidst the challenges, it is your inner peace that will allow you to be a force for good, for change. A clear heart, a clear body, a clear mind allow you to live a life of clarity. and to offer up that clarity, that peace, to everyone around you. I'm just offering our practice to all those who are in pain today and every day, allowing that pain and rage and anger to transform. into the changes that they yearn for and deserve. Bring the hands to your heart. Thank you so much for your openness to practice in this way. Thank you so much for showing up for yourself because as I mentioned, the hardest thing to do when life is difficult is to care for yourself. Thank you so much for being here. I'll look for you in the comments. I want to hear what opened up for you in your body and how do you think this will translate into how you're li you live your life in the world. Remember, freedom of movement is what allows you to live more freely in every part of your life. When your body is free, your heart is free and you can offer yourself up in more ways than just for yourself. Lots of love to every single one of you. Thank you so much for being here.